There he goes. Woo! Oh, geez, he just realized he's hooked. There he is. Oh, my God. Big fish, big fish. No, no, no. There he is. Good fish here. Good fish here. Finally. Welcome back to another episode. Today we are on the river again on the boat. We're gonna head down river and probably try to focus on a lot of the bridges because yesterday and uh, the previous week I did that and uh, it was pretty successful. Uh, I got on some nice size snook, like slot size fish. Also got a 37 inch redfish last week and then uh, I picked my dad up uh, down by um, Jensen Beach, uh, Stewart Causeway, uh, yesterday, like when I was, like I, I launched here and I was, I fished my way down that, like in that direction, and I gave him a call, picked him up, and then we uh, hit another spot, and he actually got a nice slot size snook, a uh, smaller one, and then he got his first ever redfish that was 31 inches. So uh, it's pretty cool that it seems like there's some decent sized redfish in uh, somewhat of good numbers. Uh, in the area right now and we can get them on artificials which is cool because both those redfish uh, that I caught and then the one that he caught were on just an artificial shrimp like this one here so we're gonna kind of see if we could do, do, do something similar uh, maybe we'll get lucky and also uh, find some black drum or uh, some jack Kerval, southern kingfish tarpon um, yeah, I'm just excited to be out. It's supposed to be a nice day. It's a little overcast as you can see, but it's supposed to kind of burn off and uh, hopefully the fish are biting. So stay tuned. I'll see you at our first spot. Let's try right here first. Right now it's the very, very end of the incoming tide. And I'm not sure if this spot is gonna be good because of how little current we have, but oh, maybe we'll get lucky. I think the, the current really is pretty much over but the wind is, is blowing inward. So maybe it's just the wind that is uh, making it seem like there's a little bit of incoming tide left. All right, sadly, uh, not much happening here at this first spot and we killed probably about like an hour here, but that's okay because we had like very little to no incoming current and then we went through slack water and now the tide just started going out so I think our next spot will be much better on the outgoing tide so let's get to it all right let's get this shrimp down there the water is murky really murky which is actually perfect. Like, I love fishing this spot when the water is dirty. If it's really clean, then it just becomes more challenging to get the bites that I want. Oh, look at the size of that boat. Pretty cool. Oh, there was a bite. Just missed the fish. And it might have been a snook because my leader is a little frayed up or maybe a small grouper that like pulled it around a rock or something. Let's try this little three inch swim bait. There 
is. Nope. Big fish. Big fish here. Oh, God. I think it's a big jack craval. Oh, man. I saw its tail when it came up. And I think it might be a big jack. Like, not big, big, but maybe something like 20 pounds. goes Woo oh geez he just realized he's hooked oh i can see the leader oh there he is it's a donkey jack They just popped out. <laughs> Let's check our hook. Look, it didn't budge at all. This is a super strong hook, and uh, I'll link down in the description uh, the exact name of this hook. But I recently uh, got a thousand pack from Mustad, and uh, then I made my own jig heads. So I made this jig head with a little lead pot, poured it in the mold on top of these super strong hooks, and they get the job done. All right, let's get a quick measure on him. He's just shy of like 37 inches. All right, guys, we'll get a quick weight on him. Just about 18 pounds. Nice jack to pull out of the bridge. <laughs> Any bigger, the jack probably would have won the fight. Let's get her back. All right, let's get back down there. That was super fun. I'm glad I switched to the swim bait. Although I'm sure that the shrimp would have worked. I'm sure, like maybe a school of jacks just happened to swim by when I threw the swim bait out there. So if I kept going with the shrimp, I'm sure one of them would have whacked it. But, you know, it was perfect timing, I guess. Who knows, maybe they wouldn't have. So that fish loved the look of this little swim bait swinging in the current and he crushed it. So we'll take some more casts with this and see what happens. Maybe try the shrimp one more time. And if no other fish, then we'll probably move to another spot. There he is. Oh my God. Big fish, big fish. No, no, no. Oh shit. I couldn't stop that one. Dang, son. That one broke up from the leader too. Dang it. I don't know if that was a jack. When it came up, I saw its tail briefly. And I believe it or not, I, I kind of thought it looked like a redfish like a big one, like probably like 38, 40 inches. But it was kind of pulling real hard like a jack, like I couldn't stop it at, at one bit. 
You win some and you lose some, as they say. We'll try this uh, four inch. But since we got two really good bites on that little three inch swing bait, I'm gonna pull out a couple more. But rigging these baits uh, can be a little tricky. And generally I have a bunch rigged and ready to go when I come out here on the water. But I see how I have some super uh, Gorilla Glue here. So in order to fish these baits effectively and to keep them mounted on the jig head, I put a little super glue on there so the plastic doesn't slip down. Look, all my st look at all my stock here that I have from making a bunch of jig heads. So I pull the swim bait onto the jig head just like that first. And then I pull it down and we'll glue it. There we go, perfect. Now I just gotta set this somewhere to dry where it won't get glued to anything. That last one, I feel like he had it and was already swimming like towards me and up current before I even knew it was in his mouth. I didn't really feel the bite. I just kind of like felt my line moving towards me and then I set the hook on him. And I, I think I, that was too much of a window and he got way too deep in there. And that's all that it took. All right, sadly, bite is kind of non-existent here right now so I'm gonna take a little break and have some spaghetti and meatballs actually for lunch courtesy of uh, my wife Karina because she got me this uh, cool little food thermos so I can bring some hot food with me out here on the water so we're gonna devour this little bit of lunch that I have and then I think we'll take a run down to the inlet just to check check it out and then uh, maybe another bridge and uh, try and make the most of this outgoing tide that I have right now because I feel like uh, the next two spots could be good uh, with this outgoing water. And also right now it's a new moon, so uh, this current's gonna be running harder and longer than it would uh, during, like, during a smaller moon phase. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, lunch is done. Let's get back to it and catch some more big fish. All right, let's start out with this shrimp here first. This looks really good. Maybe we can pull a redfish off these rocks here. And I got the trolley on spot lock, but I left the engine running just because of that turbulent water back there. In case the trolley fails on us, I want to be able to zip out of here quick. Fish on. What do I got here? Is this a small redfish? Oh, no. A chunky little fat snook. Look at that. This guy is really fat and, <laughs> sorry bud, I just made him pee or poop there. Look how lightly colored he is because of how discolored this water is. Sweet. Not a big fish, but it's always good to come to a spot that you haven't been to in a while and at least get a fish. All right, no other bites on the shrimp, so let's try the little three inch swim bait here too. Oh. 
perfect. There's got to be like a nice redfish here or maybe some more smaller snook schooled up. I'm actually surprised that I got the one small one though. Ah, oh, no. I snagged something on the bottom. I just broke it off because I didn't want to move spots to get closer. But that kind of sucked. One cast with that three inch swim bait. <laughs> All right, I put on a fresh 50 pound floral leader. Next, let's try this little vibe. Although I'm not gonna cast where I just casted that little swim bait. Otherwise we'll probably lose this instantly. see if this gets anything for us it looks like a per, like a little greeny so if there's any fish here looking for that maybe they'll hit this oh there's a fish a little jack curval The first one we got today could eat this one. Oh, look at that. Interesting, interesting fish. Let's see if anybody's home here. I'm gonna hit this bridge really hard because I think the potential is here. Hmm. Nothing on the swim bait. So let's try the shrimp. All right, well, sadly, it looks like the current is starting to slack up. So that means we might go a while before our next bite, unless we get extremely lucky to get a couple bites while there's no current. And I'll probably fish kind of mediocre uh, through the, the slack tide. Like I'll take some breaks, drink some water, eat some snacks, and you know, and I'm just gonna wait until the current starts coming in and then I'll get back to seriously fishing. fish here good fish here finally oh man nope get out of there oh oh this is a big fish finally oh Oh, it's a redfish! Whew! That's what I'm talking about. Finally, we had to work hard, really hard, for this one last nice fish. Yeah. Whew. That's what I'm talking about right there. Beautiful redfish. All right, let's get him on the boga. 
Oh God, this is, he's a wild one. Look at that. He crushed the Savage Gear shrimp. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that is a thick redfish. And this one is just about 33 inches. And look at that tail. She's got the typical redfish spot right there. But then she's got one nice one right on the middle of her tail there. Alright, let's get a nice revival on this beautiful redfish. 